If oligoavulation, sporadic and unpredictable ovulation, or anovulation absence of ovulation, is established usually based on a menstrual cycle history of irregular cycle, further testing is indicated to determine the underlying cause. A common cause of ovulatory dysfunction in reproductive age women is polycystic ovary syndrome (PCOS). Other causes include thyroid disorders and hyperprolactinemia. Women with PCOS often present with oligomenorrhea and signs of hyperdermidism such as mm, hirsutism, acne and weight gain. Furthermore, some infertile women present with anomeria and this usually signifies inovulation. Important causes of amenorrhea include pregnancy. A pregnancy test should be always be given. Hyperkalamic dysfunction, usually stress-related, ovarian failure or obstruction of the reproductive tract. Depending on the individual case, laboratory testing for ovulatory dysfunction may include assessment of serum levels of human coronary gonadotropin (HCG), thyroid stimulating hormone (TSH), prolactin, total testosterone, dehydropion and testosterone sulfate (DHEAS). Follicle stimulating hormone FSH, LH, and estradiol. Treatment of the etiology of ovulatory dysfunction may lead to resumption of ovulation and improved fertility. Anatomic factors. The pelvic anatomy should be assessed as a part of the infertility evaluation. Abnormalities of the uterus, fallopian tubes, and peritoneum can all play a role in infertility. Uterus. Uterine abnormalities are commonly not sufficient to cause infertility. These disorders are usually associated with pregnancy loss. However, assessment of the uterus is particularly important if there is a history that causes concern such as abnormal bleeding, pregnancy loss, preterm delivery or previous uterine surgery. Potential uterine abnormalities include leiomyomies, endometrial polyps, uterian adhesions, or cognitive anomalies such as a septate, bicarnuate, unicornuate, or didapolypsic uterus. Figure 38.4 Assessment of the uterus and endometrial cavity can be accomplished with several imaging techniques. Sometimes a combination of modalities is necessary to best assess pelvic anatomy. Box 38.1 Procedures used in the evaluation of female infertility Transvaginal ultrasonography used to visualize the vagina, cervix, uterus and ovaries. Cell line infusion sonography assesses the myometrium, endometrium, and annexa, sometimes used in conjunction with magnetic resonance imaging. History sulfingography (HSG) provides information about the uterus and fallopian tubes structure and function. Hysteroscopy used for evaluation and treatment of abnormalities identified by imaging studies such as removal of small lyomyometa, polyps, and adhesions. Laparoscopy used to visualize the pelvic organs as well as treat certain conditions including endometriosis. 
Cell line infusion of the fallopian tubes can also be performed to test their patency. Figure 38.4 Uterine abnormalities A. X-ray hysteroscopingogram confirms a detailed uterus with paired contrast fluids, cervical canals, arrowheads, and uterine cavities, arrows. B. Three dimensional sonogram indicating a septic uterus. The endometrium is separated into two components, short arrows, and the uterine fundus, long arrow, has a smooth external contour. Courtesy of Dr. Beryl Banagraf. Fallopian tubes and peritoneum. The fallopian tubes and are dynamic structures that are essential for ovum, sperm, and embryo transport and fertilization. At evaluation, the fimbriate end of the fallopian tube picks up the oocyte from the side of evaluation or from the pelvic caldex. The oocyte is transported to the <coughs> Ampullary portion of the fallopian tube where fertilization occurs. See figure 38.2. Subsequently, a zygote and then an embryo are formed. At five days following fertilization, the embryo enters the endometrial cavity where implantation into the secretory endometrium occur occurs followed by further embryo growth and development. The fallopian tubes and pelvis can be evaluated with hysteroscopy, HSG, or laparoscopy. There are several important characteristics of normal HSG, figure 38.5. The uterine cavity should be smooth and symmetrical. Identations or irregularities of the cavity suggest the presence of lyomyomis, endometrial polyps, or intrauterine adhesions. The proximal two-thirds of the fallopian tube should be thin, approximating the diameter of the pencil lead. Figure 38.5 a hysteroscopogram demonstrating a patient female reproductive tract with normal anatomy. The distal one third comprises the amplua uh, and should appear dilated in compression to the proximal portion of the tube. Free spill of diaphragm the Fimbria into the pelvis is appreciated in the cul de sac and other structures such as bowel or outlined by the accumulating dye. Failure to observe dispersion of dye throughout a fallopian tube or throughout the pelvis suggests the possibility of pelvic adhesions that restrict normal fallopian tube mobility. Examples of abnormal hysteroscopograms are shown in figure 38.6. Pelvic adhesions that affect the fallopian tubes or peritoneum may occur because of pelvic infection. Example, pelvic inflam inflammatory disease, appendicitis endometriosis and abnormal or pelvic surgery. The sequelae of any of these processes or events can include fallopian tube scaring and obstruction. Pelvic infections are usually associated with sexually transmitted infections that cause acute salpingists. Commonly implicated organisms are chlamydia, Trochomatis and Neisseria gonorrhea. Endometrius occurs with higher frequency in infertile women compared to fertile women. 
and can cause scarring and distortion of the fallopian tubes and other pelvic organs. Figure 38.6 Abnormal hysterolapsicograms Bilateral hysterolapsicon Dilated fallopian tubes with distal obstruction at the fimbriated ends No free spill of diocene B. Bilateral proximal tubal occlusion Uterus overdistended with radiopacure dye The HCG detects approximately 70% of anatomic abnormalities of the genital tracts. When there are abnormalities, further diagnostic evaluation and treatment can be performed with hyteroscopy and laparoscopy. Hyteroscopy evaluates the endometrium and the architecture of the uterine cavity. Lapar Laparoscopy assesses pelvic structures, including the uterus, various and fallopian tubes, as well as the pelvic peritoneum. During laparoscopy, chromotubation should be performed. Similar to the HCG, a catheter is placed in, in the uterus and colored dye is injected into the uterus while tubal patency and function is directly assessed by laparoscopy. Laparoscopy also allows the diagnosis and treatment of any pelvic abnormalities, such as adenosis and endometriosis.